point a finger of scorn at someone else, if we take a good look at our hand, we would see that three fingers are pointing back at us. Mr. Paul Belzer of our story has just bought himself a mountain cabin. <laughs> down and sit down. I, I, I didn't know anybody uh, owned this cabin. I mean, I didn't know, any, know anybody used it. Look, I don't harm it, honestly, I don't. I, I just come up here sometimes and I, I sit, you know, I just sit. Is, uh, is this your cabin, mister? Yeah, as of today it is. I just bought it. Well, I, I was just sitting here and I heard you drove, drove up front and I, well, I got scared. Because I, I knew if I ran out there, you'd, you'd find me, so I climbed up there and hid. How'd you get in? That window was open. Where do you live? Sir? Where do you live? Oh, uh... Oh, I, uh... live over on the other side of that ridge with my uncle. Are you uh, going to turn me in? Yeah, I guess you'll turn me in all right. Is there any reason why I shouldn't? No, I guess not. That's the way it goes. You know how to fry ham and eggs? Yes, sir. Well, I don't often eat ham and eggs, but tonight I'm going to. There's some groceries here in this box. Would you put them by the cupboard? Yes, sir. Now, there's some silverware and dishes in that basket. Yes, sir. Don't try anything funny. Huh? Oh, oh, no, sir, no. The stove isn't hooked up to the gas yet. Can you cook over an open fire? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've done that lots of times. Sure. Hey, is that real cream? Sure. And you're gonna live pretty good out there, aren't you? Well, I hope to occasionally. Pretty good place to hide. You can have some coffee too, huh? For sure. What's ham and eggs without coffee? There you go. Now, Tom, when that ham's done, you and I are going to sit down and have a good dinner and a good talk. Talk about what? All about you, Tom. We're going to talk the truth. Well, what makes you think I'm not telling the truth? Well, that uniform you're wearing with the tag on the collar is jumpy. I want to know why you're hiding. And over that hill, Tom, is a state park and a reservoir. Nobody lives there. Man, I'm not even a good liar. Well, I was supposed to get out over a year ago. And then, before my time was up, I tried to run away again. And then when you're 18, you're supposed to get out regardless. Only, uh, you have to have somebody to be responsible for you. Well, I turned 18 three months ago, but when they tried to find my uncle in Ellendale, he 
moved away and, and nobody knew where. So I could just see myself sitting in that place or someplace worse forever. I'm already older than all the other guys there. So you ran away again? Seems like that's all I do. I don't know where I thought I was going or what I was going to do. Nobody has any use for you when you spend time in a reform school. You can't get a job or anything. How old were you when you swiped that typewriter? Fifteen. Well, what on earth did you want with a typewriter? I don't know. Two other guys and me thought it'd be fun. What happened to the other boys? Well, when they started chasing us, they shoved the typewriter in my arms and ran the other way. They didn't even get caught. You didn't tell on them? What's the use? Look, Mr. Belzer, if you won't tell on me, I promise I'll get out of here and you'll never see me again. That's real good coffee, Tom. Where'd you learn to make coffee like that? My, my dad and I used to come up here on hunting trips. That was before he got sent up. That's why it was so hard on me. He was in prison when I got caught. He died there. Your mother? Well, I, <laughs> I guess she just uh, was happy for a chance to get away. Tom, you just can't keep running. A thief whose dad was a thief. Look, nobody's going to let me stay any place long. I've heard the guys back on the second offense talk. You've got to keep running. Just keep moving all the time. What would happen if you went back? Six months, maybe a year. But this time in a real pen with walls and bars. I'm old enough now. I tell you what, Tom. You can bunk here tonight. Tomorrow morning, we'll get up and we'll go fishing. Then we'll get you some other clothes. I want you to meet a friend of mine in Ellendale. She's pretty good with problems. In Ellendale? Look, people know me in Ellendale. Well, that doesn't make any difference. Say, I think I'll have another cup of coffee. How about you? OK. It, it's good. You know, if I, I do say so myself. <laughs> I like good coffee. There's the doorbell again. Probably TV and A-Line. Yeah. Come on in! Oh, go and answer it. I can tell. Not that Oh, I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about it. Did you tell me you had a party? Oh, it's not a party exactly. It's a party. Come in, Tom. Yeah, come in. We can use another fellow. Hi, Binky. Hi. This is Madison. Tom Lee. How do you do, Tom? Tom's a friend of mine. But won't you join the party, Tom? Yeah, loosen your bones. Come on. <laughs> Introduce him to the other kids, will you, honey? Go ahead, Tom. Come on. Oh, right over here. I've got some popcorn on the stove. He's a very nice looking boy for you, is he? I'll tell you. Oh? Well, how would you like a drink? All right. Come here, woman. Oh. <laughs> Go get it yourself. You know where it is. Are you all moved in? I can't wait to see it. Well, not until I get it fixed up. Oh. Is it really a cabin? It's a cabin. How far? About 10 minutes. That's all, huh? Well, I figured if I was going to spend all my spare time up in this neck of the woods, I'd better get a place to hang my hat and give the twins back their room. Wonderful. Hi, Mr. Bingo. Hi. Ready, Mom? All ready, darling. There it is. Oh! Now, don't spill oh. it as you go in. OK, thanks, Mom. Uh, Drink? Uh, no, no, no. I think I'll just have milk. Have you got a phone? Not yet. Oh. Chris, about Tom. Mm -hmm. He's run away from a reform school. I found him hiding in my cabin. Come on and dance with me. Come on. I don't dance. Oh, anybody can dance. No, Let him alone if you don't want to, Maggie. Come on. Look, my neck is stiff from looking up at you. Get lost. Go ahead. I'll be okay. Don't I know you? No. No, I'm new. Uh, why don't you two uh, go ahead and dance again? I want to show you how to do this. All you have to do is get the beat with your feet and then just have a spasm. Come on. Come on, Mrs. Fitz. Right. Let's show them how to dance. I'd like to help him, Chris, but I don't know how. I thought maybe you had an answer. Oh, my dearest darling. 
It's all I can do to come up with answers for my own children. Mom? Yes? Excuse me, but I think you better go to the door. Sheriff Schofield's here. Mom, he acts like there's something wrong. Oh, Elwin, what is it? Oh, Chris, I'm sorry to bust in here like this. Oh, that's all right. Good. Boys, will you step over here? I want to have a good look at you. Come on, hurry up. Why? Why? What's the matter? What's wrong? Well, I had a phone call saying that Tom Bean is here. Now, is he? Uh, yes, he, he's here. Well, I know you didn't know he was wanted, Christine, or you would have phoned yourself. Well, we knew he was wanted, Sheriff, but I'm afraid it's my fault. Oh, well, where is he? Tom. Uh, Tom? Well, he was here just a minute ago, Mom. Binky was talking to him. I'll say uh -oh. she was. Well, yeah, where is Binky, anyway? Yeah, where is she? Binky? Well, she's not in here, Mom. Binky? Binky! Peter, go upstairs and see if she's up there, oh, honey. Will you please? Okay. Binky! Paul? Yeah? Go on out and see if she's in the back any okay. place. Well, I, I, she, she, she wouldn't leave without telling me. Well, uh, maybe she had no choice. Well, what do you mean? Now, how did he get here anyway? We knew he was in the area. Well, I'm afraid that's my fault, too. Uh, I brought him. Oh. She's not up here, Mom. Are you positive? Positive, yeah. She was giving the jailbird a pretty big play. Well, how'd you know he was a jailbird? I remembered him when he was a kid. I already broke out. I thought it was you that called the sheriff. Well, somebody had to. I, I didn't think Mrs. Massey would like the idea of an escaped prisoner making time with her daughter. Well, now, he's not exactly a prisoner. Mom? Yes. They're not out back, and the station wagon's gone. No. Well, then she must be with him. He can't drive. Well, I'll put out an alarm, Christine. I don't think he's dangerous, but you never can tell. Yeah. Uh, th thanks, Owen. <laughs> I'll never forgive myself. I had to be the good Samaritan. Paul, oh, don't. Don't blame yourself, please. Nobody was at fault. Come on, sit down. Anyway, they've only been gone 20 minutes, and they'll be back. I, I, I know they'll be back. Pete, are you sure the Binky didn't say anything and give you no idea what they were going to do? Not a word, Mom. They just sat over there most of the evening by the window and just talked, that's all. I didn't even notice them leave. Mom, here comes the car. Where have you been? Oh, I just drove Tom down to the station, Mom. I spotted her on the way back. What station? The railroad station. Tom said he had to get back to the city, New York City. Oh, I'm sure glad the girl's okay. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Of course I'm okay. Why shouldn't I be okay? Well, well next you? time. Well, I better get going. I'll put out the word to pick him up. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Owen. Good night. Yes, look, I, I think we've had uh, enough for tonight. Why don't you just go on upstairs, will you? Uh, Susan, dear, uh, Marnie will show you where everything Good night. is. Huh? Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, boys. Good night, Mom. Binky. Wait a minute. Uh, come here. What's wrong, Mom? You tell me. Well, nothing. Golly, what a production. Look, you have never so much as driven that car around the block without asking me, much less at night. Well, you were talking to Mr. B, and well, well I since thought... Since when have you ever restrained yourself from interrupting anything at any time if you wanted to? Hmm? Oh, you ought to take over for the FBI. Very well. Talk. Well, we started talking. Yes. And then all of a sudden, Tom blurted out the whole thing. Yes. How Mr. B had been so nice to him. And, well, well I didn't see anything so awful. So he swiped a typewriter. Well, he's paid for it and then some. Why don't they just leave him alone? With all the bad things going on in the world, he seemed pretty small. Go on, honey. Stretch had been giving me a bad time all evening. So I kept talking to Tom. And I liked him. Oh. Then all of a sudden, Tom saw the sheriff's car drive up and he ran out back. Well, I just had to help him. Where did you take him? 
Well, I just drove out Shad Road towards the reservoir. He asked me to stop, so I did. He got out. He said he wanted to walk. I'll bet a Bucky's at the cabin. Yes, well, uh, all right, Pinky. I, uh, I, I don't know what you've done wrong or what you've done right, but I'll have to think about it. We, we, we'll talk about it in the morning, but right now I, I think you'd better go on up to bed, honey, okay? Yeah. And take your coat, too. Mr. B. Good night, Pinky. Mr. B, you thought he was nice, too, didn't you? Yes, I did. I still do. Mom? Yeah. I wonder why he spilled the beans to me. I guess he just wanted you to know, honey. got out of the car, he came around to my side, and he said, Binky, I don't guess I'll ever see you again, but would you let me kiss you goodbye? And Mom, I let him. And do you know what he did? He kissed me on the cheek. And then he said, I've never kissed a girl before. It was funny. Somehow it seemed very important to him. I wonder why he wanted to do that. I don't know, honey. I don't know. Yeah. Well, good night. That's a great kid you've got there, Mrs. Massey. Now I've got to do something I don't like. I've got to take him in before we all end up in jail. All right. Paul, let me go with you. I could kiss you for asking. Keep your cups. Uh, right in the cupboard, Chris, over the sink. Oh. Yeah. Boy, this sure is some nice place you have here. <sighs> yes, isn't it? I wish it were mine, but it isn't, you know. May I have some coffee, Tom? Sure. Thank you. Here you are, Paul. I don't feel like I'm hiding here. I feel like I belong. Belonging is better than anything in the whole wide world. I, I know I didn't, but man, I sure felt like I belong. And when I met you at your house and you held out your hand and you said, come on in, join the party. I sure didn't expect it to be you that turned me in, Mr. Belzer. Well, Tom, Mr. Belzer didn't turn you in. One of the boys recognized you. One of the boys? Then it wasn't you? 
you know, for a while I, I was somebody. I think he talked to me. Of course, at first she, she didn't know who she was talking to, but... Well, even after I told her, she just laughed and... Her hair bounced and... Well, I still felt like I was somebody. Tom, you are somebody. You're you. You're a child of God, just like all the rest of us. With all of the qualities that you need to make a wonderful life for yourself, if you just will. You know, Pinky, Pinky didn't look at me like, like the boys back at the school said. And you don't look at me like that either. Would you like to uh, pour me some coffee? Hmm? Oh, well, Miss, Miss Massey. You know, talking about things and, and doing them, that, that's two different things, but... Well, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get out of that place, but I'm going to get out. And when I do, I'm going to find somebody. I don't know who, but somebody, and I'm going to make them proud of me. Something like, like that Benky. She sure is some girl. I think so. I guess I know why. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> well, uh, would you uh, like to take me down to the sheriff's office, Mr. Belzer? Sure. I'll go get my things. Tom, I want you to know something. I'm going to do everything I can for you. You know, I was already... Counting on that, if I could just think I could come back here, would it sure make the time go fast? Sure you can if you want to. Yes, yeah. Would you tell Benky something for me? Of course. Would you tell her that after all the thinking and all the words, well, it was that one little kiss on the cheek that really did it? Funny. Didn't take much, did it? No. It never does. Oh, let's go. Compassion should move us not only to tears, but also to action. Good night. And we'll see you next week.